what are some ideas around strengthening your resiliency muscle? First of all, I'd like to talk about the definition of resilience. And I use rubber bands as an analogy of how far can we get the window here? How far can we stretch? What's our capacity, our resiliency capacity? Resilience is the ability to face and stand steady when we are dealing with what I described as loss, challenge, change, poor behavior of people, poor behavior maybe of yourself. And if you can't stand steady and you fall down, the ability to bounce back. So that's my definition of resilience. And here are some categories of some solutions, some ideas to help you. So the first is to pay attention to your thoughts and your talk. We are living, swimming in a culture that has a tendency to blame. It's all your fault. All you need to do is watch election time and what's going on with pointing fingers and whose fault it is. And there are a few people, I'm included in that, that tend to be blame owners. I, oh, I must have done something wrong. So blame owners are the very opposite of blame throwers who are looking at people to point their fingers at and blame others for the problems that are going on in their circle. Another tendency is either to minimize problems, and that might be COVID-19, or the problems that you're having with your business or your family. Uh, or your circle, or to exaggerate, to exaggerate that it's worse than it is. You can sense some people that are in that place of minimizing and other people that are in that place of exaggerating. Both of those can be exhausting, but what's really exhausting that I've noticed is that there are some people that are having a reaction to all the changes and the challenges of COVID-19. And they move into, you expect, I expect you know about the stress response that is fright, flight, and collapse. There's many people right now I'm noticing that are in that fight response. They have lost their ability to calm down and decide exactly how to maneuver. They are busy fighting. Uh, as speakers, we take a stand and we, I hope that we, most of us, um, take a stand in a calm, collected way for our solution. You're experts who have a solution and you're needed right now and you're needed to keep your mental health contained so that you can present that solution in a strong stand. Then there's the other people that aren't fighting at all, but they're in that place of Giving, giving up, and they tend to go into depression and anxiety. So unlike the person who's fighting, who I really encourage you to remind yourself of the stand and the difference you make in the world, for those that move into anxiety and depression, you need to talk about it. You need to talk about your losses, talk about your frustrations, talk about the sadness that you're experiencing, the frustrations that you're experiencing. Annette Stanwyck, bless her heart, put on a seminar for grief and loss because many, many people, I mean, all over the world have been experiencing grief and loss. And stuffing feelings creates anxiety and creates depression. And at that point, I want to remind you that the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, CAPS for our members, we have the CAPS Foundation. Not only does it provide some finance if you're in trouble, also peer support so that you have an understanding listening ear. And I happen to be proud to be a peer support. That means I'm available if somebody reaches out to listen to those frustrations, those losses, and perhaps those conflicts that are going on in the home because we're spending more time with hopefully loved ones, but even loved ones can have conflict. 
The second idea around building your resiliency muscle is to set realistic boundaries. So boundaries are where I begin and you end. Boundaries help us know when we want to say, yes, so I'm going to go over the fence or I'm going to open the gate or a no. Some people have like brick walls that are no and it's like hitting your head against a brick wall in order to try to get an opening. But it's important for us to know when to say yes, no, it depends, I need to think about it. I love saying thank you, but no, or it's not good for me to say yes, it's not good for me to go over that other side of the fence for me. So what kinds of boundaries do we want to put in place? For many of us, we want to have our work protected, our workspace, when we've got more people in the home. Now, this was more of an issue in the summer. Uh, my next door neighbors decided to homeschool her child and both parents are working at home and they really had to work out boundaries. So Elizabeth George, when she was the MC, talked about putting a sign on the door of do not disturb. I recommend you put a sign on your workplace space saying when you are available to avoid that teenager getting really anxious about wanting to buy for him or herself a Fitbit, you know, on, on Amazon and you'll see a bill of like 400 or $500. So let your family and uh, the household people know when you are available. The second tip about living with more people in, a, in your home more hours is to have family meetings. I don't know any organization of two people or more that do not have regular meetings. And I would like to mention that on my website, there is um, right here, there is a schedule to have family meetings. This meeting structure actually works for businesses as well. For the family meetings, there's a little bit more fun built in identifying what's working, what's not working. You know, you're on the phone having a business conversation and perhaps you had to go somewhere else in the house and somebody bus, bus in. You wanna talk about what can we do to be in this together, that we're in this together slogan during COVID-19 is in the media a lot. So are you using it in your family? Which brings me to the other point around having some boundaries in the home, and that is how much television is on and what television. So you might want to explore limiting your screen time and what uh, you're watching. Find a trusted place to go. Um, we tend to watch BBC so that we have more of a world view. So being careful where you trust. And speaking about trust too, how do you decide whether you're going to go to that party or not? Whether you're going to wear the mask or not? Who you're going to hug? Who you're going to let into your bubble? Well again, that's about boundaries. And uh, find one person that you trust, whether that's on media or your family doctor, and in the end, trust your own knowing, your own wisdom, what feels well for you. Because when people don't trust their own wisdom and their own knowing, that's a setup for some mental challenges. The last piece around boundaries is for you to consider where you have influence and where you don't. So right now you don't have influence that much on all these rules that are being made about COVID. You have some influence around clients and I sure hope you're staying in contact with them. And where you have 100% influence is in your own goals, your own values, your own thoughts, your own behaviors, your own dreams, and reinforce those. 
You can also reinforce those from a very well-known AA serenity prayer. Grant me the serenity to accept what I cannot change, the courage to change what I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And as professional speakers, we have much wisdom in our circle of knowledge. The third tip area that I'm going to talk about are strengths. And uh, strengths are a gift, a gift we have innately have to give to the world. They include inborn inborn or innate talents and they also include knowledge they are a cluster of behaviors that when we use them we're energized we would do them if we were paid or not most of us found our passion and get paid for it so if you're doubting your strengths i really encourage you to go back and read your own elevator speech Read your own website, read your testimonials, and remind yourself that you have strengths and gifts to give to the world. You did before COVID, and you continue to have them. And again, they are more needed now than at any other time. One strength that's required of us right now is to be adaptable and flexible. And a strength is to know that we can ask for help. Those people that imagine they're strong enough to ask for help remind me of a day I watched my sweet husband try to move an upright piano from one room to the other and there were two steps to go down. And he thought he was demonstrating his strength, but he absolutely looked ridiculous. Use your resiliency muscle to put your hand up and say, I need help. It's a sign of inner strength. This tool, the VIA Character Strength Survey, developed by Dr. Martin Segelman, the founder of Positive Psychology, gives you 240 questions that you can answer and your top five strengths come up and they may at this time, if you're struggling in any way to acknowledge your strengths, may help you to reaffirm your strengths. Last but not least, I want to remind you, you chose to be a professional speaker. You are esteemed in your circle. I want you to be esteemed in yourself and know that you are stronger than you think and you are definitely resilient.